Uh, welcome back to the 8th grade uh, painting unit. Uh, we're on session number 7, I believe, of this uh, project. Uh, it is moving along really quite well. Uh, today I'd like to uh, move on into larger areas, perhaps the tabletop and some of the work in the background. Uh, so we're going to be experimenting with some, uh, uh, some types of brown. Uh, probably starting with a lighter and going with the darker or we'll see what happens when we mix it up. Okay now brown when we're trying to make it from the basic colors is a combination of violet and orange and uh, when you then that gives you a basic colors uh, type of uh, russet I guess is the, the color you would call it. Um, and if you add black to that color, then you'll get a darker brown, whereas if you add white to it, you'll get more of a tannish color. So, <clears throat> it has been a while since this has been made up in class, so this will be an adventure for us all, including me. So, my advice, clean that brush so that you can uh, make sure that you don't get polluted colors. Uh, and also, just, you know, when you're using, uh, we're doing group lessons, it's really, really helpful if you were to simply uh, you know use the edges of the puddle of paint really clean your brush please between each ch color change and uh, when we start mixing up it's really helpful uh, so and the, your classmates will thank you uh, okay now so let's review what we've been doing here so when we started we made a drawing uh, we added some things to it as time went by to make it look better so like the chair was added in and then I personally thought it needed some sort of horizontal elements in the background in order to uh, to carry the eye sidewards from one one object to the next and also create that type of space that should exist between uh, basically a table with a, a box and uh, a fruit and stuff on it and that space into the background so that's kind of why we have been doing what we're doing but there is a lot of brown in this picture traditionally so let's uh, try to mix some up and see what happens so I'm going to obscure what's happening here right now with my paint card and uh, don't do that at home but we're doing a video and so you have to be able to see what I'm doing so first of all let's go ahead and try to mix up some orange we're looking for a uh, like a pumpkin orange uh, permanent orange secondary orange if we can make it so I'm going to take three dips of the red because we're going to probably need a lot of this color and then I'm going to have to clean out my brush because I'll be using the yellow next now it usually takes much more yellow <laughs> Uh, to create the orange we're looking for than it does red. Normally we would dip out like four uh, yellows first. So I think we'll start with, let's start with like, we're going to need five of these yellows. So, and we'll place it kind of next to the red in this case. One, two, three. Oh, that's a good one. Four. <laughs> and of course five. Now let's see how this works. I'm hoping we'll get the pumpkin orange. Uh, we can go ahead, we don't have to clean out our brush right now, but we are going to start to try to scrape all this together into a tight pile. We want this paint, once we go to the trouble of making it, to stay usable for a while. Once it dries out, it's, it's you know, not useful anymore. And uh, also, you know, along the way it gets really, really gluey and pasty. Uh, if you spread it out too much. so Now that is extremely reddish orange and as a result of that it is going to require significantly more yellow. But that's okay because we're going to be using a lot of this in the browns today. So the basic theory we're working with is that when we use violet and orange together we will get browns. So, but we're definitely going to need, uh, let's just take, oh, that's a good one right there. That might, that might be enough. And stir that together, too. Okay, now I'm seeing that color change that I'm looking for with that pumpkin orange. But I'll tell you what, that red is still very potent. Uh, and uh, we may have to simply divide off half of our paint save that other that red orange for another purpose perhaps and then we'll continue to make our 
orange that we're going to mix up for our brown down here. So we will save that red orange that we just made. And in fact, we're going to be so careful about it that we're going to scrape it into a tight little pile of its own. Okay, now let's start. This is what we want to work with, though. The red is very, very, very strong uh, pigments in this red paint. So let's just add another. That's uh, one real good scoop of the yellow I ought to do it in this case now. So let's uh, see what happens here. Because we're just starting to get that color change. Definitely, it's definitely fighting with me here. All right, we'll try one more. I don't know why we're having such a struggle with it, but it wants to fight with us. So sometimes this is how it goes. However it goes, we're probably just going to have to move on to our violet because it simply just needs to have an orange of some color. That'll affect how much violet we put. Okay, so we're going to leave this a uh, little puddle of. Uh, it's tending a little bit more towards the red, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say it will be fine. So let's uh, go ahead and rinse out that brush and dry it thoroughly because now we're going to try to pick up some and make some violet over here. So in this case, let's take uh, three of the blues. brush so you don't get your neighbor mad at you when they come in in the next period and then we're going to this red as we can see it's really really strong so let's just take a little bit of that red I guess we can always put more in stir it together we're looking for grape jelly purple or something that's visually close to grape jelly purple if we can find it violet is really what we're looking for and it looks like I'm getting it right there and just that small amount of red it's just funny that how that works that you know you on the first try, I'm getting the violet perfect, but uh, the uh, the orange was just a nightmare. So that's how it works when you're painting. Some of the paint works with you some days, and other days it fights with you. Okay, let's hold this still here. I'm sure it's difficult to watch a demonstration of a moving paint card. Okay, now we've got orange, we've got violet. So our task is to mix them together and see what happens with that. And that's where we should get a type of brown. I am going to turn this upside down so it's closer to me and I can put my brown over in here perhaps. So let's let's see what happens. Let's take one dip of the orange, place it right here. Uh, let's from the edge of the puddle take a dip of the violet put it on top of it and mix it together and see what kind of color we get and pull it into a tight little pile. Alright, it is indeed looking brown, or a, a reddish brown for sure, but brown no less. Okay, so let's uh, clean all of that off of there. Alright, so now what can we do with this uh, this brownish color that we've got right here? Well, if we add black to it, it will get much darker. If we add white to it, it will lighten up a bit. So I'm going to say, let's take this brown, and we should probably uh, clean out our... Well, okay, we've got it on there, and our brush is probably loaded with it to begin with, right? So let's keep that brown for now, and we're going to use it, and we're going to paint... I have to move my card so I don't put my arm and stuff. I want to paint in our window, window let edge here with it, and that'll be a good way to uh, see what its true color is. So this is the base color for brown, and uh, it's traditionally called uh, russet, I do believe. And so once we make the russet, we can alter it to do other things for us. So now in uh, the your color theory primaries are red, yellow, and blue, and they have a value of 1. 
if you take primaries and you add them together in equal amounts, then you can create green, orange, and violets, and those are secondaries. Secondaries have a value of 2. When you put together any combination of colors that equals 3 or more, then you have a tertiary color. So, for instance, red-orange is red, which is a value of 1, and orange, which is secondary, so it has a value of 2. That equals 3, therefore red-orange is a tertiary color. Okay, so it just has to add up to 3 or more. So in the case of what we just made, this brown, we took a secondary color that was worth 2, and we added another secondary color, violet, so orange is secondary, has 2, and violet is secondary, and is worth 2. And by combining those two together, we made a tertiary color of a value of 4. If we were to add black or white to it, then that would add one more point to it as well, and that would be called a tertiary 5. So we are making, these are complicated colors, these tertiary colors, and so it's not so easy as, uh, you know, it, it just, it's not so easy as squirting some brown paint out onto a uh, card and painting with it. So there's a lot more to this type of painting, and it requires that you understand the color theory that we have so painstakingly went over uh, since the design unit and the use of the color wheel. lecture we covered the uh, color schemes which are basically recipes for making colors uh, or making paintings and if you follow a color scheme then everything comes out a lot more well organized and the color scheme that we are using is called a triad that means we're taking three colors off of the color wheel and only using those three colors to make our painting with. Now we could do that with any other set of colors. We could pick any three colors off of the triad, or off the color wheel, excuse me, and as long as they're never side by side, then you can uh, alter those colors and mix them together in various amounts, and it brings a sense of organization and unity to the piece of artwork just right from the beginning. Uh, and so knowledge of your color schemes is extraordinarily uh, useful when you are uh, learning to paint. It's almost like in music, if you try to play a guitar but you don't know anything about the notes, then you might be able to noodle on the guitar, right? But you're probably never going to be able to really play it uh, until you understand uh, why it makes the sounds it does when you uh, manipulate it in a certain manner. So uh, this is the, the theory, uh, the color theory that we use is a triad, and we're using the primary triad, of course, because from the primary triad, we can make almost any color we want. Uh, I have never really come across a color that can't be made through the addition of black and white. Uh, by using the primary colors. So uh, we go pretty basic uh, in this instruction. And, but, you know, foundations are extraordinarily important in your development and your skill level and your understanding of what we're doing. Painting is not just filling in something. Painting is a, is a complex philosophy. Uh, and it is, can be painstaking, nerve-wracking, Oh, just mind tiring work. Other times it can be, a, you know, a joy to create. And I have been making all of the projects right here in the studio as these videos are being produced. And uh, so I'm experiencing all of the issues that you all are experiencing out there. So I can relate. I'm making the same painting that you were making. So that me understand uh, what you were going through, although I've made many paintings and I've got a pretty good idea to begin with. And I've been teaching art for a, a little while now, and uh, I've watched people struggle with a lot of stuff. Okay, now I'm going to kind of...
because I'm going to bring that crossbar there, that transept, together so it looks like it was, uh, it was built that way. Okay, so, you know, working with the fine point of the brush and mixing up your own colors and being responsible for everything that happens on the painting yourself is a, a huge achievement. And making one that, you know, you might be proud to hang up in your room or, or put above your couch someday or, or give away as a gift. You know, those are things that, you know, when you make art, nobody... It, it, those are really important gifts that people get, and their parents keep their whole lives with them sometimes. You know, nobody keeps that social studies quiz that you got to attend on, right? They might put it on the refrigerator for a week. If you're lucky. Okay, so now we're going to have to finish up with uh, this little bit of brown we've got here because I've got plans for it. And, but we may have to make some more brown up and now that we know how it's done. And this gives us a nice, rich, uh, dark, you know, kind of a coffee brown. Uh, I, would, I would probably maybe call it, if it was a wood, I'd call it walnut. It's uh, kind of a very dark wood. And, but uh, that's a, this is a nice, dark color of brown that we can begin to manipulate and then uh, you know lighten and darken uh, so I think you can see uh, you don't need a tube of paint to be able to uh, you know make the colors that you uh, need you can literally make them by mixing colors and that's part of the knowledge and skill of painting that uh, you know for long time is was it like a trade secret? I mean, you guys are getting it kind of for free, I guess. Alright, it's funny. I was able to get the brown with almost no problem, but the orange was giving me fits. So you just really never know what's going to happen. That's, that's why it's, it, painting is an adventure, I suppose, in that some sort. You get all set up, everything's ready to go, and then, you know especially in painting class, that something disastrous happens right next to you, just sitting there minding your own business, and somebody knocks over an entire tub of rinse water or something. Or there's a, like a fire drill right in the middle of painting, and I have to stop, rinse out your brush. <laughs> So see, and this paint, and I'm using acrylic paint with the 8th graders, uh, leaves these grooves behind, and on close inspection, meaning if you were as close to my painting as I am, uh, you would see those little grooves in there, and it really mimics wood grain really effectively. Okay. Come along nicely. I hope your painting's looking good. I hope your drawing is looking good. Uh, kind of touch those together there. Uh, little specks of white showing through really drive me crazy. I always feel the, the need to go back and fill all that stuff in. Alright, so we're closing in on. Uh, this really was a good start here. It, it kind of warms up your. Uh, painting skill for something a little bit more complicated. It also, uh, you know, fills up the space in the painting uh, with the paint that was already loaded up in the brush from the mixing. So instead of, you know, just rinsing that paint out into the rinse water, if you uh, use it to kind of fill in a large area that you don't have a whole lot of control issues with, you know, you're not painting around really tricky curves and stuff like that. Um, that's a, always a good idea to just run that brush out with the uh, color that you got in it. And, you know, the, the brush does eventually wear out, so the more you rinse it out, and the more you wipe it out, and the more you, you know, constantly use it on a rough surface like this canvas I'm painting on, eventually the brush, the bristles on the brush will, 
to get really, really ragged. And painters, keep them anyway. Uh, now you got to be careful about putting your hand in the paint. I'm not putting my hand in the paint, just on the painting. This area right here is kind of tricky. Simply now, if I were in a studio, I would t simply turn the painting upside down. I would not um, I would twist myself around into these uh, strange positions to get at the paint. But uh, I'm doing my best to make this uh, video so it is, you know, uh, clear to the people who are watching it. And I will periodically look up at the projection screen as I paint just to get a good idea of what you are seeing. And that helps me kind of try to keep it between the lines there sometimes. Okay, now the last little bit of this and we can move on to what we're going to do in the next step here. And I can get back over here for this one. With my paint card. And although it may not be visible on the camera, where that uh, those two panes come together, right there in the middle of the cross, uh, you can actually see a little bit of like an X shape in there where I painted the the paint in it. Uh, you know, so it looks like it was cut that way with a miter. Okay. Yeah, and it's those little strange details like that sometimes that does it make make the whole painting. So you know, when you get the chance to fix a detail up and it doesn't take you a whole lot more time, you should definitely you know address it while you're there looking at it. Okay, now opacity issues as we go down through here. Just dress that up. Okay, let's look at what we got there. And what we've got looks pretty good. Okay, <clears throat> now let's take that brown paint that we just made, and I'm hoping you still got a little bit of it left. And we're going to use that this time because it's dark, and our grapes will need uh, some stems, and so will the uh, uh, the pear as well. So let's take a little bit of that uh, brown and uh, make sure you, you can use only the finest tip of the brush here and we're going to trim in the little detail there of our great vine and then it shouldn't take a lot of paint because you're only using some micro, micro amounts of it and I'm only using tiny dots applied to the tip of the brush. So violet and orange makes brown. Now how much violet and orange you put together determines what type of brown you make. Whether you add black or white to it affects how dark or light the brown is. Now see when you start pressing down on the tip of the brush you got to stop when this touchy work and only use the finest point of the brush. If your paint's real gummy or pasty you need to just wet the tip of the brush just a bit so that you can melt that paint just a tiny bit. That's what we got. <coughs> and that looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to use just a tiny bit more for the the uh, stem on the pear, and using just the tip of the brush, very light pressure. If you got to really press down on the brush, you're doing it all wrong. But you do need to get the tiniest bit of paint into that brush. lightest of pressure, you know, the extreme amount of control. Get that set up there. Okay, that was looking pretty good. <clears throat> now we'll take some of this also. We're going to paint the handle of our knife as well. 
with it. So, although it does seem like we're getting stuck on details, there's a there's a purpose behind all of this. So, we're going to paint around the rivets that hold it together, and we're using only the finest point of the brush and the smallest amounts of paint. Now, if you got to press down on the brush really hard, then you do have to put more paint on. Uh, uh, because that is really just not going to give you control when you start pressing down with a great deal of pressure. Now I can tell that this little puddle of paint that we've been working with is drying out and if you've got more paint than that then you are a little wiser than I was but I'm going to finish this up and then we're going to do some tenting with this and there's a large area that I want to tent in with uh, what happens with this color once we get this knife handle painted. So around the rivets carefully, hold the blade into the handle. Alright, and we should have a nice wooden handled knife handle. That's what we're trying to mimic, is wood. Wood is good. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, now, in the remaining time we've got left here, I want to start by filling in this tabletop. So, we're back to uh, our brown that we just made, and I've got just a tiny little residue left of it. If you need to, you may have to mix more. And that's, you should still have your violet and your orange on our mixing card. And look, our primary card is completely clean. So, uh, we're going to be using some white though. So I'm going to take uh, two large... Oh, I should have rinsed out my brush. Curses. Okay, rinse out your brush if you haven't because your neighbors in the next class will be furious if you leave them a nasty brush and and also gummed up paint. Okay, and I'm going to do my best to pick up that, that pollution I just made. So. Okay, I'm going to take two very large scoops of that white paint and I'm going to start scraping up uh, that residue and what's I left of that little puddle of brown I have and as you can see it's turning tan already so we've got a very very pale tan color <clears throat> and that's good because we're going to manipulate that color we're going to add another color to it here in just a moment to alter it okay so we've got what is kind of a peach or a topi peach. you got to scrape it all together into a tight pile. Make sure you get all of the residue off the brush because we're going to add gonna, we're, the point is to make it kind of a yellowish wood. Let's rinse out. Let's take some of the yellow and see what occurs. Make sure your brush is clean and dry. Let's, take a, uh, let's just take one good scoop of the yellow. I probably can't burn it Put it into our very our tan that we just made. Scrape it all together into a tight little pot. And it's starting to be very interesting. Uh, what we're getting is a okay, and we do have to continuously scrape it all together into one tight pile. Alright, it's kind of a unusual color, but I think it's gonna be okay. It doesn't necessarily look like wood, but that's all right too. Okay, we got to keep scraping it together. So we've got this kind of uh, Turner yellow kind of effect. And if we have enough, we might go back and uh, add some onto our banana. Okay, so now before this all dries on us, we're going to take this kind of Dijon mustard yellow. We're going to paint the tabletop in with it. And I'm not even going to clean my brush out because. It's got a lot of paint trapped in it that I just spent all this time, you know, mixing up. So let's get that painted in there, and uh, eventually we'll have to dress it up. And now we got to be very careful when we have two colors that come into close contact with each other to just try to exercise the best control we can and get that nice clean edge right up against the next color. Now that paintbrush I'm using is just completely loaded with this color of this paint. 
on the tabletop here. Okay, so, but it is about starting to run out, and that's when I start getting control issues, right? So, I'm going to go back and pick up some more of my paint. But it is, it's going on very smooth. So it's funny that some of the paint is very tacky and, and gluey, and then other paint is very uh, creamy when you put it on. So, it's just, it's funny about the viscosity and the texture of the paint and its consistency. And that's affected a great deal by conditions like heat and, and humidity, um, whether you're outside, radiant light is hitting it. Uh, some colors absorb uh, heat better than others do from the sunlight. And so some areas will dry out faster based on the color that is painted on them. Okay, so this is really, I'm really trying to get that, that pale tannish yellow tucked up there right up next to the fabric. So that fabric stands out really bold against this color. So I'm going to, I made plenty of it, so I'm going to use it. And I want the surface of it, the overlapping stroke marks, to be horizontal here. So when I, I finish filling all of this in, I'm going to uh, make my plastic control lines. Those are those grooves that's left behind by this type of paint. I'm going to make them uh, go horizontally so that I can really play up that flat tabletop effect that I'm trying to achieve here. So we simply just took the brown color that we made and we added a significant dose of white to it and that made a very, very pale tan color that once we added the yellow to it got us more towards this kind of maple or uh, it's kind of a it's a neat color though it, uh, on the projection screen it looks a little greenish strangely okay. but I'd call it more of a honey mustard color I guess if I had to categorize it or a Dijon mustard looking pretty good so this painting is coming along uh, and you know sometimes you experiment with your colors and ask yourself well, what will happen if I did this or this to this color and that's how you learn things is through experimentation and then the irony is the next time you try that if it's not with the exact same types of paint and stuff it will sometimes not work out it's like a magic trick that you learn and then you try to show it to somebody it doesn't work Hard trick. All right, there we go. Control, accuracy, sustained focus, long attention spans. That's what we're trying to do here. Is build sustained focus. Okay. Well, wow. we pretty good. A little bit of, a little bit of work over here above our ellipse that represents the base of our cheese stand. Ooh! Wow, it caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Well, that was pretty good. So I'm just going to kind of dress up those edges a little bit. And I, like I was saying, I want my uh, the marks left by my paintbrush to uh, go uh, have some of that sideways, uh, those markings, uh, you know, so that when people look at it, they will see that and maybe uh, perceive it as a, a horizontal surface, which is what I want them to perceive it as, is a tabletop of sorts. So this is kind of the color of some of our tabletops uh, at school in the physical classroom. Uh, these, there's a 
couple I move around that I work off of. Um, okay, well, let's get this kind of textured in there a bit. That's an important part of the attractive nature of some of these, and we'll continue with this. All right, let's see what we made. Let me get these cards out of here. Well, so far, i got to say, it's starting to come along and look like a painting, if you ask me. So when we uh, started today, we, uh, we did a little color theory and review, mixed up some brown here, uh, did our window frame in with it, uh, took that same brown, fixed up some of our uh, the stems on our fruit in the bowl, painted in the knife handle, and then uh, added white to it and some yellow to alter its color a bit, and made our tabletop. So, if that's not progress, I don't know what is, but we are filling it all in, and that's been a good session. So, uh, thanks for your attention, and I will see you in the next session. Have a good day.